Hi guys, it's Aristov FPV here presenting the build video of a new lightweight UAV I've designed in motor glider form that flies over an hour per charge and has the average efficiency of 120 milliamp hours per kilometer. This is with a 4S5 amp hour LiPo battery, which means a near two hour or over two hour flight time per charge is possible with your custom lithium ion flight batteries. So the aircraft we're building features a tractor design that is meant to fly FPV missions like observing or scanning the area. This comes in handy for the military that want to build and fly affordable UAVs for short to medium range reconnaissance missions. Or it can be used for medium range to long range FPV and autonomous missions if you like to use it that way with its approximate 50 km trip distance per charge. So my design is equipped with a Matec F411 WTE flight controller that runs the INF 6.1 firmware, which is currently my favorite flight controller setup. And its average cruise speed is approximately 40 km per hour, consuming 4.5 amps. So my design of the 1.6 meter tractor UAV was to be as compact and low drag as possible, and the curved nose was designed over the battery for the tightest space inside and the best aerodynamics outside. With its current efficiency of 120 million bars per kilometer, I think it paid off. And the rear mounted FPV camera is an idea I got from RC Test Flight's Solar Plane V3, but I think I'm gonna increase that bird's eye view by mounting a panning servo in the tail to get the full observing experience. So in this section, I'm acknowledging people who have supported my work by donations since the last build video, which are Jim Callen, Killian, Charles G. Hobson, Just a Stranger, Amilcar Andrade, a person called Someone, Sergei Yatskevich, and Alex Talsma. So I personally want to thank you guys very much for contributing to the build of this UAV and the ones to follow, and I really do appreciate it. And if you'd like to support me as well, you can click on the yellow icon on my YouTube page and donate any amount of coffee to keep me up at night to finish designing the next easy to build UAV. So that was the introduction of my tractor type UAV I nicknamed the Silver Guardian. So sit back, relax, enjoy and learn how I've made my UAV and how you can build yours too. So let's get straight into it. So here's the overview of my electronics for my build, but you are entitled to use your own electronics and not to have to copy mine. Uh, but if you want to have some of the same components like I do, I have links in the comment section and in the description below for you to check out and order. So this is what my carbon boom looks like. It's from Hobby King and there were actually two pieces of them, but I joined them together for a total length of 77 centimeters. It is 12 millimeters in diameter. So there is a pass through for three servo wires, which is for the elevator rudder and for the FPV camera that's also mounted in the back. So the wing that I use is a 1.6 meter collapsible wing, the Armin wing, and it's a standard version, uh, but it's made from Depron. But unfortunately, the footage has been removed. Um, so here you can see the section in which I um, construct one, but then out of foam board. If you want the whole video, um, click on the top right corner to check out because it's an instruction video on how you build arm and wings. But the wing that has been built in that video is the exact same wing on this aircraft, but then uh, made from Depron, which is basically a non-papered version of foam board. So here are the dimensions of the fuselage that I'm going to be making out of five millimeters thick foam board. And because of the original footage and pictures have been accidentally deleted, I have um, added this fragment from a previous build video because the building method is the same. So the method of building one is with the experimental airlines techniques. And at this moment, you can see me uh, conforming the shape of the fuselage and then um, temporarily taping the outer edges together. And this is to hold the shape of the fuselage together while you glue in your strip. And when the glue has been hardened, you can just remove the tape, clean your fuselage up because then it would be finished afterwards. 
So now we're gonna start building the conventional tail, which is also made up from five millimeters thick foam board. And here you can see the dimensions with a six inch root cord and a four inch uh, tip cord on both the horizontal and vertical stabilizers. So here's the fragment of me just applying the tape, mainly for its uh, strength, but also having these different colors for, you know, its paint scheme, which is just black, golden, and silver. So I'm cutting out the form of the horizontal stabilizer after taping it uh, in its paint scheme as it is, and also cutting out the control surface, which is one and a half inch uh, in its cord. Then I'm trimming away uh, the root of the uh, control surface so it can move up and down. And then I continue with the vertical stabilizer, which is just basically um, half of what the horizontal stabilizer is. And so here you can see the picture of me having trimmed away the paper so that we're gonna glue plastic cards and the vertical stabilizer on the horizontal stabilizer. So first is gonna be the uh, vertical stabilizer in its uh, form, uh, truly vertical of course, and then I just bent some plastic cards in these 90 degree uh, shapes to be glued between the vertical and horizontal stabilizer as you can see here. And this of course adds strength to the uh, tail section, but mainly to keep the vertical stabilizer truly vertical at all times. And so after our tail has been finished, we're gonna glue it on our boom. You can see that I have removed the tape uh, so that it just will be bare foam that's gonna be glued on the uh, carbon boom. And of course, we're gonna apply plastic cards too because the tail section is the most crucial part, uh, which has to be strengthened very good. So a plastic card is necessary uh, to be glued with the booms and with the tail section. And that's the fragment here. You can see that a plastic card has been conformed to the um, shape of the underside of the tail section and that the glue has been added and the plastic card has been put in place. So as you can see here, I've added a foam board or a double stacked uh, foam board, you know, like this plate on the boom. It's been glued in its whole length. And what you basically want to have is that when you insert it vertically on your fuselage pod as it is, um, that it could not move easily. So it has to be tight between the lower and upper insides of the fuselage. And so this is to position the boom and it is inserted for approximately one third of the uh, length of your boom. So it's approximately 25 centimeters in there. And so what you wanna do next is add a little piece of glue uh, on the top and the bottom. And if you can also uh, at the front section so that the boom uh, will not move anymore, but is in position. And this is so that it will be reinforced in the position that it will be with plastic cards and some other uh, method of reinforcement. So you guys can see here that I'm finished with the boom and uh, have been glued it in place with plastic cards. Um, you also want to make sure that the uh, straightness or, you know, just the length along the fuselage will not be crooked or uh, doesn't go sideways while you glue it in place. So here you can see the taper that I applied and it's 10 centimeter in its length and 3 fourth uh, in its height. That's the taper that I applied. Um, and then I later on uh, covered it up with another piece of foam board. But here you can see what we have accomplished so far. And the tail is extremely stiff, um, but it only moves left and right. 
at the front. So that's just a matter of more plastic cards gluing it uh, on that place um, so that it won't move anymore. So this method of gluing a carbon tail boom to a fuselage structure has been thought of along the way. So that's just the creativity or just the ideas coming up in my mind along the way. And I'm very happy on how it turned out because it's extremely solid, it's strong, and, it, uh, and, I, and I'm confident enough that it wouldn't move out of place even after years of use and landings. So on this fragment, you can see me cut out some more room uh, for the electronics, but it was mainly to glue plastic cards for the boom at the very front. So here you can see me bending a little piece of plastic card into the L shape and then gluing that um, between the upper inner part of the fuselage, so the inside and the boom itself. And this has been done to the left and right side, of course. And after the glue has been hardened, I tested the um, structural integrity of the boom and it just doesn't move anymore. It is just one with the fuselage and is extremely solid. So I'm pretty happy on how it turned out. So right now you can see that I'm gluing in the electronics. I made this stack for the flight controller. Um, so that has been in place, but it was also mainly stacked up with a Depron F foam board to eliminate uh, vibrations. And right next to that, the battery comes in place um, and it doesn't move backwards anymore because of the um, foam board stop that is one with the uh, tail boom. Um, but as you can see, it is extremely uh, tight in there. Um, and you know, when the hatch goes over that, it's just extremely compact and aerodynamic on the outside. So I'm very happy on how the front section has been turned out. And so this is me just finishing the um, electronics, uh, you know, applying them and connecting them uh, to the flight controller. So the um, wires go through the booms, they exit out on the front end and uh, they go into the flight controller. So like I mentioned before, those are the elevator, rudder, and FPV camera wires. 
So right here, I'm using five millimeters uh, thick carbon booms uh, in longitudinal axes to have the rubber bands over them and to hold the wings together. These are the uh, wing tie down spars. Um, they are in longitudinal axis, so that means that they, they will hold the wings together when the rubber band goes over them at the very edge of the fuselage. So that's why I also made these uh, cuts in the hatch so that the rubber bands would have uh, room to go over them. And then the servo extensions for the wings themselves, for the ailerons, so they would meet the uh, servo extensions coming out of the wing and then would be cleaned up inside the fuselage. So all in all, that has been turned out pretty good and I'm very happy with the results so far. So after the airframe has been finished, you are entitled to use your uh, own electronics and customize them the way you want. So if you have a different flight controller, motor, batteries, or whatever, if you're gonna add lights um, to whatever place, um, you can figure out how to in your own way. Uh, but here's just a fragment of me installing the electronics um, the way I want. So after customizing the electronics, I was ready for the maiden flight and the aircraft has been finished. So all of this took approximately two and a half to three days to think about and to go along the way um, in the designing process that is. But then in the next video, which is basically a follow up of this video, I'm going to show you guys my um, INAV settings. So the uh, values and modes and uh, type of things that I have configured in INAV so that the aircraft flies the way it flies now, which is very good and extremely stable. It also takes off by itself and it follows the waypoints pin perfect. So um, all of that will be featured in the next video. I hope you guys really liked this video and learned from it. Uh, please leave a like and comment if you want to support the channel and subscribe to not miss out on the upcoming videos. So thank you guys for watching again and I'll see you guys in the next video.